Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at some tips to help make drummer really work for you in your music. We're going to be looking specifically today at some tips to give you a more realistic or believable performance. This isn't the end all, but I think that these are some of the things I find myself doing most of the time when using drummer. And because I use this so much or so heavily in my songwriting, it's such a core part at the beginning of my production that there's things that happen later on as I keep on going forward. So perhaps at the beginning, I'm just using the default settings here. And as I get more and more of the production in place, things begin to morph and to change. So we're going to look at a lot of these things. The first thing is with the pattern itself. So I've got this song happening. It's still in a rough state. I know that's true I'll keep checking all my mirrors Until this trip is through Go to sleep, I'm driving And in the morning So right now I've got a kick and snare pattern 7 Which is the one of the double time ones For this particular drummer uh, Let's see, for the overall thing We're using Austin Which is the Roots brush I'm Using the flatbed beat preset i've changed a little bit we're using the brush taps for sure but i'm doing the double time that was really where it started it may be that that's not where i want to end it with this though and so what we could be doing is looking at one of my favorite things which is follow and then i can choose one of the other parts to have it actually match up with changes the overall feel of it which is nice we can get back to how it was because it was a preset but let's see how this works on another hill and i know that it was you in my mind i know that's true i'll keep checking on let's see if any of the other ones make sense all my mirrors until this trip is through go to sleep i'm driving and it so in this case, I think we will leave it on the two times pattern. And in the morning still, another stretch of road ahead. But we're going to switch over to details here. And I actually want to push the feel just slightly. And just beyond another hill. And I know that it was you. In my mind, I know that's true. And so now we're just ramping it just a little bit up. The other thing to note as I'm doing this, as I perform the other MIDI parts, I set this as the Groove Master. So the Groove Master is something we can turn on by right clicking on our track header and we can turn on the Groove Track. And then I clicked the beginning of this, right? It looks like this normally. I'm gonna click on that star and then I choose the other tracks I want to kind of line up with this. It's a quantization type effect, like a groove quantize. So if I speed this up a little bit, everything else will adapt a little bit to that. But it's a great way to have all the other MIDI parts maintain. You can even do audio to it as well. But I think right now the MIDI is just fine. So for instance... So the drums may push, the bass and other instruments will follow, it's just the voice that's not going to follow. And so we don't want to do too much necessarily. So that's another tip to make sure that you're getting a tight groove with the other instruments. Another thing, after I get the song pretty far along with what I want, I'm coming over here to this kit, the Blue Ridge kit, and I'm going to do the producer kit option down there at the bottom. And I'm going to do the Blue Ridge Plus. So this gives me the full producer kit. Sounds the same because it's essentially the same. But now in this stack, I've got all of the other drum parts. So you can see overhead kick, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, hi-hat, tom high, tom mid, tom low, room A, room B, and then leak. So we're going to look at that in a second. So 
So that's the leak signal right here. That's a room signal. So what is the leak? When you record like a full drum kit, and it's not a sampled kit, say you go into a studio and it record acoustically record a drum kit, each of the microphones have leak from them. So the snare is going to hear a little bit of the kick and quite a bit of the cymbals. The kick drum is going to hear a little bit of everything else. All of the mics are bleeding onto one another. And so that's what this is emulating right here. We don't have to have it turned on, but it is one of those options. In fact, if we open up our drum kit here, I can turn on or off the leak for this instrument. I can say which room I want this to be in so I can actually uh, process them separately. I'm curious, let's actually come down here. Room A. It's not clear just from listening like that if it's the exact same room or not. It'd be worth further exploration. But I can come through any of these instruments and turn the leak on or off, except for, you guessed it, cymbals. Which I think is kind of funny. I mean, we don't necessarily want the cymbals leaking anyway, but it is interesting that we have the option for the other kit pieces, except for the cymbals. So how do we use this to create more realism? Well, we know it's there, and then we can come in and actually use these room and leak microphones a little bit differently. So I could turn up the leak. On another hill, and I know gives it a lot more like a live type sound, a little bit more in the room kind of experience. Do we want to turn the leak all the way up? Probably not, but if you're looking for something a little bit more raw, then potentially you could do that and you're going to get a little bit more of that uh, in the room kind of sound. The last thing I would say with all of this, again, not a necessarily comprehensive list, but to actually when you do the producer kit, come in here and actually start adding effects like you would if you were mixing a full drum kit. So you can see we've already started here. We have uh, the hi-hat and the snare. They all have EQ and, well, there's a vintage EQ on that one as well. We have an enveloper down here on the kick out, a tube EQ on the kick in, um, but with all of this, keep in mind that just EQing is only part of it. For instance, if I want a kick that sounds a little bit different than the one here, I can either choose a different kick or I could come through here and actually lower the pitch or adjust the volume overall or, or dampen it differently, etc. So I can actually come through and change some more of the sound. Uh, straight at the source rather than just EQing it. And so we can sculpt this however we want to get the final sound of our kit. So don't just put on a track and get the pattern you like. Actually go in and start customizing. Use the producer kits. 
Use the, the selector for the actual drum kit designer so you can choose the different pieces of the kit you want. Time align it using not only the, the groove tools, but also going through the pattern tools that we talked about. All of this is going to create the drum sound that you exactly want and something that's going to fit in with your song. Okay, hope this is all helpful. Uh, this is one of the great parts of Logic. This particular tool is just so amazing and it works really well and it keeps on expanding with every big update they do and gives us more and more. So definitely get in and start using this thing.